In Acts chapter 26, Paul recounts his conversion. Conversion means change. So Paul takes a time out and he reflects back on what was the captivating force behind his success. He goes ahead in Acts chapter 26 and he writes about it. So let's go ahead, open up our Bibles to Acts chapter 26. My challenge for you this week is to really read all of Acts chapter 26. I also share with you in the run book, if you have that book, if not, there's a link after today's um, video and on my website for you to purchase a copy. In the run book on pages 45 through 51, we are gonna take a look at Acts chapter 26 and I'm charting, I'm, char I'm putting a chart together for you to be able to journal out your life just like Paul did. So you're able to see certain, let's say, drawers that you might need to open and kind of sort out and, and understand what God's doing. This chart will help you. It's an amazing chart. So again, 45 through 51 in the run book is great. If you do not have the run book, I will be sharing five ways shortly about this chart, five ways um, in which hope kind of stopped Paul in his tracks and, and helped him change. So mark down those five ways, mark down the scripture verses that I give you, and I just trust that the Holy Spirit's gonna help you understand how to do that, and you can kind of take note in your own journal. I promise you that the run book will help because I just go in, in real, I'm very thorough with the way that I'm helping you kind of chase down some of your thoughts. I'm allowing God to kind of get in and let the Holy Spirit bring some understanding to some places that you might have in that drawer and that you may have shut long ago. So these questions help you open up that drawer and begin to process change and gain new perspective. So I'll read a few of the pages in the run book to help you if you don't have the copy, but also use a journal and um, again, open up to page 26 and I challenge you to really read that this week. This is a short assignment, but so much can come out of it. I promise you so much. So also on pages 76 through 77 in the run book, I share my own personal testimony using this chart that I'm giving you as an example. And here's the bonus. On page 78, once you've gained the knowledge and you're beginning to seek wisdom in parts of your life, I put a chart together just for you. So you could begin to chart out and see how God is beginning to write your story. So there's so many exercises that you will walk away feeling fulfilled in certain areas of your life. And I'm praying that there's a captivating force that comes behind you and pushes you to some great success. So let's zoom in together on Acts chapter 26 and let me share with you five ways that hope came into Paul's life and gave Paul really gave um, Paul new hope in his life, gave Paul new hope with focus, and gave Paul new hope with just his future. So again, we're going we're gonna to look that hope really created a new vision. Hope is what Christ came to the world to do. He came to bring us hope in the dark situations, in the times that we struggle in life. And so if we can just kind of peel back the curtains or peel back the areas where we're just struggling because we don't understand what's going on, that's where hope wants to just kind of seep through. You know, sometimes when you have a curtain up um, in your house and, and, the, and the light is just so bright, you just kind of give it a little close just to bring the, the right lighting in your house. Well, picture on a nice, bright, sunny day, you just kind of open up those curtains and there's just so much light that you can see every little detail in your house. I know for me, when when the light, when those curtains are open or the blinds are drawn, you can see just the, a little bit of dust across your kitchen table. Sometimes it drives me nuts because you can just see every little, little um, speck of dust. And that's kind of what God wants to do. He wants to bring hope into some of these areas and he wants to produce a light so you're able to see from a new perspective. Again, hope wants to bring life. Hope wants to bring a new focus. Hope wants to renew and restore your future. So let's just step back now and let's look how hope is chasing us down our roads because you'll see in Acts chapter 26, it's titled Paul's Journey on the Road to Damascus. 
And that's really when hope got his attention. So honestly, friends, hope is chasing you down your own dusty roads right now. The problem is, is we can't perceive it. So today, I just want to take some time, generated five thoughts of how hope could be working in your life based off of how hope worked in Paul's life. And I'm just hoping this gives you the ability to perceive how hope might be working in your life, how God may be working in your life. So let's go ahead and let's think, what roads are you journeying down today? You may have several roads. I know for me, I can be having some great successes down this road. And then some other roads, I just feel like I'm hitting a dead end. I'm really going through some struggles with things. I reflect back to this chart. So you may have several roads. And so you may be going down some roads where you know hope is chasing you down. Maybe you don't know hope's chasing you down. I know on some roads, hope is chasing me down. And hope may be chasing us down to change our attitudes, to help us with our thought process, maybe to take that dead end that we feel like we're hitting and just bring a new focus so we can keep going each day and stay committed. Because sometimes when you feel like you're hitting a dead end, you want to give up. I know that's how I feel personally and in some areas of my life. But you have to understand that God is not a God of giving up. He wants to chase you down and bring new hope, new vision. So if we know already that God's character is not about giving up, then we know that we cannot give up. We just have to step back and understand how hope could be chasing us down. So I'm hoping that through these five quick little instructions of how hope chased um, Paul down, you'll be able to sit back with a new perspective today and get a new vision. And that's, that's my prayers for you. So let's go ahead now and let's look at how hope may be trying to force itself into your life. And I want you to just be aware of this because once you're aware of this, you will understand the force that's behind your success and you will be able to grab onto that. And that is the key. So let's look at number one. Number one is hope stopped Paul. All you need to write is if you don't have the run, write the word hope and write the word stopped. And if you want to see where that actually happened in scripture, right in Paul's life, it's Acts chapter 26, 12 through 15. So really zoom in on verses 12 through 15. And what happened here? It was a turning point in Paul's life, huge turning point in Paul's life. He was stopped in his tracks, literally in scripture. He was stopped in his tracks by a great, big, large beam of light. It's funny because this beam of light knocked him down. I call it the first sunstroke, um, really, in scripture. But this beam of light knocked him down. It got his attention. It stopped him in the way in the route that he was running and put him in a whole new life focus, put him in a whole new direction, changed his entire future. So again, I always liken light, the light onto the truth, onto God's way of trying to get into your life. Anytime you study scripture, you'll see that light resembles truth. So how is the light, how is God's truth trying to knock you down? How is he just trying to kind of peel back those curtains in your life and reveal those specks of dust and try to grab your attention and maybe your thought area down this road, your attitudes on this, your thoughts on, no, this is not a dead end. I'm trying to show you a different perspective so you can move in another direction. The Lord is trying to stop us. So we may not understand everything. We're not called to understand everything. What we are called to do is to understand that we need to be aware of how God may be stopping us on our roads and trying to get our attention. Often we're too busy. Often we reject the truth. Often we don't admire those people that are into the things of God. We tend to, some people make fun of those people. Those are the places God's working. Your life is only going to move forward through truth because we were created that way. So you need to understand how is hot hope trying to stop you? When hope gets our attention, we stop running. When we stop running from the things of God, we begin to see what God could be doing because here's what happened next in, in Paul's life. Number one, hope stopped him. Number two, hope sent Paul. Hope sent Paul. That's in Acts chapter 26, verses 16 through 18. 
Zoom in on those few passages and you'll see that once he was stopped, he was sent in a new direction. And God only calls us out of failure to send us into something new. And I love that. I have experienced that in my own life. He will not stop you in your tracks and set you up without giving you something new. He's all about something new. Again, we have to understand how to perceive that because the new could come through a new plan, a new, a new job, a new person, a new church, starting church for the first time, uh, maybe just a new group of friends. Hope arrives in different areas and we have to allow that perspective to kind of come out in our life. When we shut those things out and put up walls, we may be missing the light of hope. So let me just read one area uh, in my run book on page 48 that I want to share with you that I wrote and this might help you. So if you don't have the book, if you do follow with me on page 48, I'm going to start at the top. It says, don't you love how God calls us out of failures and sends us immediately in a new direction with a new vision and a new plan? I'm going to read a verse to you and it's Isaiah 43, 19. It is my life verse. So again, jot this down in your journals. Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Again, this chart is going to help you perceive it. His word says, do you not perceive it? God wants to make a way in your desert. And so hope will show up. Hope may stop you but then hope is going to send you. I love the part of this verse that asks us a question. Do you not perceive it? Our perspective is the steering wheel of our lives. It influences what we see as well as how we think, act, and respond to people, places, emotions, and situations. If our perspective is faulty, we can run ourselves ragged in all the wrong directions or all down all the wrong roads. Paul had to make a choice. After he was knocked down, he needed to sit up and then stand up on his own feet in order to agree with God's perspective. Sometimes a breakdown with God needs to happen before a breakthrough. So sometimes a breakdown before a breakthrough. If you're going through a breakdown, Think about that as the way that hope is trying to show up because Paul was knocked down. He was knocked down. It was through his breakdown that he experienced a breakthrough. We need the perspective during the breakdown. Are you going through a breakdown right now? If you are, embrace that and ask God for a fresh perspective. That will be your breakthrough. So a breakdown will result in a breakthrough if you have the right perspective. So Paul wants to send you, I mean, God wants to send you, hope wants to send you in a new direction, wants to do something new. But again, we have to understand and fully acknowledge that God wants to guide us and have control and direct us despite our struggle. So it's his super and our natural at that point. And he begins to send. When he stops, he sends. Number three, hope will strengthen you. And that's going to be in Acts chapter 26, verses 20 through 25. And that portion of scripture, you're going to see where it strengthened Paul, how hope strengthened Paul. What happens is Paul was given kind of a new vision. And so a lot of times the Lord just shows up and gives you something new. I can't really explain what your new is until you embrace it. And you cannot embrace it until you really trust God and put yourself out into these new places that you really feel God's presented an opportunity. When you start to pursue that opportunity, um, God's going to send you a little bit and then he's going to give you just enough to strengthen you and help you grab onto a new vision. It just will happen. It's the way he works. He'll make it completely easy for you to understand. So hope will strengthen strengthen you during that time. And that's super important to understand that God's not going to let you just hang there despite your struggle. He wants to come in. He wants to fully um, guide you and direct you. And he just kind of wants to take over in your life and he will strengthen you. So let me show you what number four says, because four and three go together. If he's strengthening, strengthening us, which number three says hope will strengthen us. Number four says, 
hope will stretch us. And I want you to see how the two kind of work together. There's a little jiving that goes together with hope will strengthen us and hope will stretch us. And hope will stretch us. You'll see that in Acts 26, verses 24 through 29. And you'll notice that a lot of times when hope is stretching us, what you're seeing is that there's a little conviction going on. The word conviction means we're just feeling um, an area of our life where we just need to stand and do this right. We need to stand and stay committed. We need to just allow God to take over and we kind of need to take what we're hearing and what we know is right, even though we're, we don't understand really how to fully do it, we just need to stand up on those feet and move forward and we just need to pursue it a little bit. We know that that's right. We don't understand it all, but we need to just go. And that's the stretching part. Sometimes we don't understand. But as we allow the light to come in and for hope to stop us and, and really teach us some new things, and when we see the new, we're kind of stretching ourselves when we embrace that. But when we're stretching a new truth that God gives us in his word, maybe you're starting a new Bible study, maybe you're around just a new language, new language. Maybe you're not familiar with, you know, the Bible or the verses and, and there's just there's just a newness and, and the way maybe a friend is sharing with you or you're going to a new church home and this is all, everything seemed foreign, but there's a newness in the language. That is a stretch. And what you begin to do is stretch that newness, stretch that truth over a hurt, maybe a scar. And what you're going to understand is as hope is stretching you, hope is strengthening you. So there's got to be a truth that you're um, embracing. And when you're embracing that, you're stretching and at the same time you're strengthening. And you'll see that that happened in Paul's life. He's going to show you that when hope showed up and stopped him, hope sent him. He was obedient and he went into these new opportunities. When he got to those new opportunities, hope was slowly strengthening him through his obedience. But then in number four, he was being stretched. Hope was stretching him. The more he was being stretched, the more he was being strengthened. This will be very clear in your life. So again, whatever road, way back to the beginning, I talked about several different roads that you may be struggling with. Pick a road. Try this chart out. Really take your time and break down the verses that I was showing you for each one. And you will see where God is trying to stop you. You will see how hope's trying to come in and send you in a new direction and give you a new perspective. Claim that verse that I shared with you in Isaiah 43, 19. I want to do a new thing. He wants to do a new thing in your job, in your marriages, in a relationship maybe that you're battling with. But we have to be able to take on a new perspective and sit back and look at that. After that happens, hope's going to begin to strengthen us. Then hope might stretch us again, but remember, hope will come back and strengthen us. And all said and done, number five says, hope will satisfy you. There is no peace in this world except for the peace of God. And that is the hope that he brings for, to us. He brings a hope that will satisfy us. And you'll see that in Acts 26 especially down in verse 16. It says, Rise and stand on your own feet, for I have appeared to you with a purpose. Acts 26, 16. Rise and stand on your own feet, for I have appeared to you for a purpose. So the Lord's saying, Look at I'm trying to appear in these parts of your life. I'm trying to appear in this relationship that you're struggling with, but you need to sit down. And let me bring a life focus. Let me bring a future. Let me renew your mind here because right now your attitudes, your emotions, and your strong will is getting in the way. So if you just sit down, I will bring satisfaction. I may not heal everything right away, but I will bring in and you will feel satisfied. I promise that I'll get in there and I know that one day things will be perfectly right because that's what God does. But in the meantime, today, at this time, the Lord will satisfy. Hope will satisfy you, just like he did Paul. And when we put the other areas of hope together that I shared with you, there's even a greater satisfaction. So I'm hoping that you'll take a few minutes, read Acts chapter 26, jot that down, and then go back through and realize, number one, hope wants to stop you. That's in Acts chapter 26, 12 through 15. Number two, hope wants to send you in a new direction. Hope wants to start over in that relationship and send it in a new direction. Hope wants to start over in your marriage and send it in a new direction. Hope wants to start over with just maybe some areas you're beating yourself up on. 
I know that was me personally today. I jotted some dream busters down personally in my life about an area that I'm struggling with. And I really came, I put myself at a dead end. I wanted to show myself all the dead ends. And then what happened is on another people piece of paper, I wrote down what God God's character looks like. And God's character is not about any of those dead ends that I wrote. God's character is about sending me in a new direction. But I needed to ask God. I needed to ask him to change my attitude, to change my focus, to um, change my thought process. And now I'm going to allow myself to let hope strengthen me and stretch me. But that's up to me because I need to get around different people um, to help get a new perspective on this. I need to really get into truth. I need to sit down and read and let the light of truth just kind of seep into my life and stretch over those areas that I'm just struggling with. And when hope gets in there and stretches that, it will give me a new perspective and help me be aware of where God's at work. And that ultimately will bring me to number five, which means hope satisfies. So if you get a chance, I'm highly encouraging you to read page 70, um, 6 through 77 in the run book. And I specifically talk um, about my marriage in that, in that chart. I kind of talk about how hope really stopped me in general and put me on the right track in my personal life first and then helped me understand my husband and where he was at and then ultimately helped me understand my marriage from God's perspective. And so there were a lot of things that needed to change. I wasn't right and in the right place, so God began to work on me first. Kind of took out a, a time out on saying that my marriage was at a dead end and really gave that to God. And at the same time, God strengthened me, gave me fresh hope, and he gave me a satisfaction even though everything wasn't great. And in the meantime, because he had me um, in the right place and was working on my attitude, I gave God the time to do what he needed to do with my husband. And if I would have just gotten in the way of all of that and pushed on and said, I'm done, because we often say that in our relationships, I'm done, I wouldn't have allowed God to get his best work done in me, which ultimately produced his work in my husband, which ultimately produced a satisfying marriage. And again, I have to re I have to come back to this chart a lot of times in a lot of areas of my life because hope was sent to us to give us a life, to give us a focus, and to give us a future. So I pray that this chart is amazing. Again, the book will really help you funnel your thoughts. And it's one chart that you can keep with you day by day, season by season, year by year. It's how I start my journal off in many areas of my life. So I pray this is a blessing and I look forward to meeting with you again this week. Thanks, friends.